As of May 12, 2024, the situation for the armed forces of Ukraine continues to deteriorate rapidly in the northern part of the Kharkiv region. On the evening of May 11, the Russian military department officially recognized that in the last 24 hours, Russian troops managed to liberate five settlements in the Kharkiv region. Strelechi, Pilnaya, Platanovka, Ogurtsova, and Borisovka. At the same time, war correspondents continue to regularly report on new settlements that regularly come under the control of the Russian army. So, as of May 12, war correspondents recognized that Russian troops had managed not only to completely capture the territory of the village of Gatichi, but also to take control of villages such as Krasnoy, Morakovets, and Olinikova. Moreover, war correspondents also report that Ukrainian soldiers from the territorial defense brigades continue to surrender en masse to Russian troops, along the entire line of combat contact in the northern part of the Kharkiv region. Against this background, Ukrainian telegram channels continue to denounce the obvious lie of the Ukrainian general staff, that the armed forces of Ukraine were allegedly able to stop the advance of the Russian army in the so-called Grey Zone. According to them, as of May 12, 2024, offensive actions by assault detachments of the armed forces of the Russian Federation, forced units of the armed forces of Ukraine to retreat from at least 11 settlements, in the northern part of the Kharkiv region. Meanwhile, Russian telegram channels, citing their own sources in the Russian military department, stated that after the complete liberation of the village of Gatichi, Russian troops not only came close to the outskirts of Volchensk, but also managed to enter the northern part of this strategically important city. It is reported that as of May 12, the assault groups of the Russian army under the designation Fearless, continue to move towards the city center. Commenting on the situation around the city of Volchensk, war correspondents said that from the first minutes of the storming of this city by Russian troops, Ukrainian soldiers from the territorial defense brigades began not only to leave their positions en masse, but also to surrender. Seeing this, the Ukrainian High Military Command was forced to send motivated nationalists from the Kraken Nationalist Battalion to Volchensk, in order to deter the advance of Russian troops. Moreover, the head of the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, General Kirill Budinov, was also forced to send his battalion under the designation The Sun, to the city of Volchensk. The Ukrainian High Military Command hopes that these motivated nationalists, who hate Russia to the core, will be able to prevent the capture of the city of Volchensk by Russian troops. According to war correspondent Yevgeny Podobny, in Volchensk, heavy street fighting is currently underway, with the use of tanks and infantry fighting vehicles. The warring parties are also actively using artillery and FPV drones. Against this background, Ukrainian propaganda, with the help of pro-Ukrainian bloggers and journalists, began to declare that the city of Volchensk, would turn into a second chase of Yar 4 Russian troops, where the Russian army would get bogged down for many months. Thus, the Ukrainian general staff designated the second line of defense of the armed forces of Ukraine. These are primarily such settlements as Volchensk and Lipsy. My friends, you must understand that if the Ukrainian army fails to keep Volchensk and Lipsy under control for a long time, then the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, General Sersky, will simply lose his most combat-ready reserves, which consist of highly motivated nationalists. As you can see, the forcibly mobilized soldiers from the territorial defense of the armed forces of Ukraine do not want to fight at all and surrender to Russian troops at the first opportunity. 
Therefore, it is so important for General Sursky to continue to keep these settlements under the control of the Ukrainian army. Meanwhile, the commander of the intelligence unit of the armed forces of Ukraine, Denis Yaroslavsky, officially admitted that in two days of fighting, the Russian army managed to break through the first line of defense of the Ukrainian army in the northern part of the Kharkiv region. Commenting on this situation, the Ukrainian officer said that the Russians so easily broke through the first line of defense of the armed forces of Ukraine because it simply was not there. The commander of the intelligence unit of the armed forces of Ukraine admitted that all the funds that were allocated for the construction of the first line of defense were simply stolen. As it turned out, in this part of the front, the Ukrainian army did not have not only fortified areas, but also minefields. Moreover, the soldiers of the 125th Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, who fled from their positions, admitted that high-ranking Ukrainian officials and officers of the Armed Forces of Ukraine forced them to sign an act of acceptance of the line of defense, which was not even 20% ready. Meanwhile, as it turned out, after the beginning of the offensive of the Russian army in the north of the Kharkiv region, accused of stealing funds for the construction of a defensive line for the Ukrainian army, the head of the Kharkiv Regional Military Administration, Oleg Senegubov, along with two high-ranking officers of the armed forces of Ukraine, fled Kharkiv in an unknown direction. At the moment, the Ministry of Internal Affairs and the Security Service of Ukraine have put these people on the wanted list. However, the bad news for supporters of the Kiev regime did not end there. Surprisingly, American military experts from the Institute for the Study of War continued to confirm the territorial gains of the Russian army in the northern part of the Kharkiv region. So, according to the Americans, as of May 12, 2024, Russian troops also took control of such strategically important settlements as Kudayevka and Hoptovka. Well, my friends, based on how things are going on the battlefield, President Zelensky will also have to flee Kiev in an unknown direction very shortly.